So I'm working on this thing still. I have just done a little test, which I'm going to repeat because I forgot to record it because I'm an idiot. And that is to pull out the A20 ball as part of the diagnostics process in the service manual. Lift that board out to make sure that that card is not affecting the REM bus because it's a parallel bus. And if you have something else on the bus which is causing a problem, it may cause it to think that there's an error on a particular card when it's actually somewhere else. This happens to be on the same data lines as the one it thinks is bad. So I'm going to pull this card out. I've already done that. I'm just going to show you again anyway. So it's A20 board. I'll just take it out. So if we pull this up now and do a test, we'll see the error codes come up again, which proves that it's not the A20 board which is causing the problem. But I want to show you this anyway. So doing the display test, start the test, error code's still there. So that's 0726-0731. Yep, RAM F, exactly the same. So the RAM is on A30 board, which I've marked on the chassis here, which is the one with the orange indicator. I've already lifted the board out, so I want to show you. So RAM F is defined as being this network of RAM over here. So it's 0 to 16 basically, well 0 to 15, that's what F is, 15. And that is actually U309, so it's this saying this chip here is bad. That's what it's indicating anyway. So what we'll do is we'll take this chip out, we'll test it, because I've got two testers now, one I built and one I purchased. We can test out the RAM, make sure it's actually bad. Regardless of what happens, I'm going to put in a socket in, and then that way we can put the RAM in, into a socket. That way if you do have more RAM problems, we can just plug them in instead of desoldering the ball, because each time we solder a ball, there's a risk of damaging it, especially trying to get chips out, it's always harder. Right, so this is U309 here, which I have to desolder. Now, the way to do this in a really safe way, if you're not worried about potentially saving the chip, is to just cut the legs off the chip from the other side, and then take out each leg individually, one at a time. That gives you a, a much lower chance of damaging the circuit ball. But if you think the chip may potentially still be okay, you obviously don't want to destroy it. You might think, okay, well, I'm not absolutely certain that chip is bad. It could still be something else. So I don't want to waste a chip which could potentially be salvageable. But these chips are a little bit harder to get and a little bit more expensive. So I don't want to waste one unnecessarily. It may be I'll replace this chip and find out it's still not this chip. It could be something else, making it think it's that chip. It may be a broken trace even, who knows? Although I think I did actually eliminate that already. Maybe the tester doesn't even say it's bad. It might still be something which the tester can't detect. It could be a speed thing or a timing issue which is showing up in this test routine but not on the tester. It's also possible. Let's get started. Right, so let's desolder this chip. Let's get some flux on it. I'm going to do is I'll put some fresh solder on it first and that just gives us a better chance of getting it out without struggling too much. The easier you can make it for yourself, the better. I'm going to use silver solder on this even though I'm desoldering anyway. It just helps it flow a bit better, I think. Try to make sure it goes through to the other side of the ball, which because it's a double sided ball, it needs a bit more to get through there. And the reason I'm not dragging it across is because I don't want to move the solder from one pin to the next, I just want to keep it on that one I put it on. So it has a chance to flow through, so they're getting dragged to the next pin. You have a blob at one end. I think this is multi the ball. That one's internal plane. There's no trace on the top either, I can see either. Right. Let's check to see if they're okay or not. Right, let's give all these pins a wiggle, see if they move. No. A little bit. No, a little bit. Yeah, it's going to be a pain. This side's desoldered, but the other side hasn't. I might be cutting pins off after all. None of those are really moving. 
Right, so I'm going to cut the pins off this thing because I've really got no choice. I don't want to risk damaging the circuit board. It's too hard to desolder this. And if I persevere with it, I could do it. And you can see a couple of pins have desoldered. I'd rather just cut it off. It's not worth risking the board just for the sake of a chip. You know, if I can do it, then great. Otherwise, nah. Some of these just popping out. So there we go. Good enough. Alright, so bits flicking everywhere, so I need to make sure I find all those and get them out of the way. It's a shame because I did want to test that chip. It's only barely held on, you know, but it's not worth risking a, ripping a trace out for that. I was hoping to get the chip out in one go so I could test it, but never mind. It's out now. Having a uh, one of these cheaper sockets. I do have a turn pin socket, but I actually prefer these, strangely. Turn pin ones are supposed to be better. I actually prefer this kind of socket for soft. So we'll pop that in, solder it on, and then we'll plug a new chip in and try it again. Right, let's get some flux on this. With my never ending flux tube. Seems to never run out, it's incredible. So let's get one pin soldered on, and I'll lift it and just make sure it's definitely sitting nicely. Using 300 degrees on this. These older boards I don't like to use too much heat. But then I might need to uh, increase that to get the flow through the board a bit more. I'm giving it plenty of residence time to let it soak through the board. choice is to use a lower temperature with a longer time or a higher temperature with a short time. But um, because you're trying to get it through the board I prefer to use a lower temperature for a longer time in this case. I'm going to bend that pin over it's touching the track next to it. Just want to lift it up in this case there's a solder mask problem. It's the same track is it? Actually the same, same track doesn't matter. Wrong about nothing. <laughs> Would you reckon good enough? Yeah, I reckon it's alright. Right, so the socket's in place. I've even managed to put the socket in the right way up this time. So I'm going to test the RAM before I put it in there. So I'm absolutely sure that the chip I put in is working at the moment it goes into the ball. Or at least as well as my tester can test. Right. Let's do a test. So I've done this test a few times already on this exact chip so it should be absolutely fine but you never know so I just want to be absolutely sure this chip is definitely good at the moment I put it into the board or at least as good as I can check for. Just takes a little while because it's, because of the time it takes to update the screen it slows it down as well because it adds into the overheads. If I didn't have a screen updating all the time, it would be a quicker test, but uh, anyway, that's done, that's fine. We'll put it in. Also, if you haven't seen this project, this is a little DIY project I built, obviously on a bit of purple. ball. I've designed a circuit board for this, so if you're viewing this video later on, when I've done recordings, obviously, and actually publish this video, there will be potentially a link down below. If there isn't one, ask me for it in the comments. To go to the circuit board, you can get from PCB Way, which has got the Gerbers, you can just go and take it somewhere else and get it made there if you prefer, it's up to you. But the Gerbers are there, you can get, we'll get it from PCB Way, the firmware is there, there's a parts list, that sort of stuff. So you can build one of these yourself. Um, 
common parts, it's not exactly hard, so it's basically going to be no Pro Mini and a regulator, which you don't really even have to use. You, you don't really have to have that, I'll just know as a precaution. But, uh, yeah, easy to build, so it's open source project. And if you want to modify the code and change it to how you want to use it, that's up to you. But uh, it's available. Right, let's install the IC. Make sure the pins are all lined up before I push it down. Okay, and that's in. Should I put this into the unit and actually test it and see if it works this time? Fingers crossed. Right, let's reinsert the card. Let's just, uh, let's just plug this into power first, actually, just to make sure the chassis is grounded. Things grounded, including me. Right. This goes in the other route. Right, just that moment of truth. Will it work? Bet in the comments. Come on, comment down below. Will it work? What, what do you reckon the odds are? Right, moment of truth. Let's power this beastie up and see if it works. If we've got any new faults, it could be that's just the beginning of the faults. It could be other RAM chips which are also bad. We'll have to power it up and find out. I'm a bit nervous about this because you know you never quite know what's going to happen. Actually, I might lift this up very slightly in case there's any magic smoke. You never know. Are you ready? I'm not sure I am. Push the button. Oh, it beeped. System error. Error code 1100. Well, we got further. We fixed something. Hmm. Test mode press preset to clear. Curious. So that's what we're getting. Now to find out what this 1100 is. So it says press preset to clear. Okay, where's the preset button? I wish really you look at the front of this thing. Here it is, down the bottom. It's powered up. Front end programming error detected. Okay, but it is at least powered up. Obviously not working. Getting somewhere. Over here we've got this red indicator for over. That may indicate there's a problem with the input card. I may guess here. I mean, I've tried changing the switch over, it didn't help. Input doesn't seem to matter. Range. Doesn't seem to matter. So it's auto range, but also over. But with nothing on the display here. We think there'll be something there, like a noise floor or something. And there's nothing there. Yeah, I don't use this thing, that's part of the problem too. Just trying to cut that code and see what's going on with that. 